Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about the oxymercuriation of alkynes. In the previous video, I shared with you that alkynes could uh, undergo hydration reactions in, in, the, um, in, in the correct sorts of conditions, much like alkenes. Uh, and so here I have an al generic alkyne, some generic conditions, and the, the carbonyl product that alkynes form uh, under hydration conditions. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about oxymercuriation. If you remember uh, from the reactions of alkynes, that al or reactions of alkenes, alkenes will react with water in the presence of some mercury compounds to form alcohols uh, after some reductive workup. Alkynes can do things a little bit differently. Um, but it still, uh, still follows the oxymercuriation kind of reaction. The reagents needed for oxymercuriation of alkynes uh, are water, mercury sulfate, and sulfuric acid. In fact, uh, this reaction actually works out okay without the, the, the mercury. There's uh, an alkene version where it's just water and acid that converts alkenes to alcohols. But it turns out uh, the presence of mercury uh, sulfate or other mercury salts dramatically increases the rate of, of this particular reaction. Uh, so again, I just wanted to highlight how um, this, uh, this oxymercuriation reaction is, is similar to oxymercuriation of alkenes in that we start that we start with uh, an a molecule that's got some unsaturation, and we react it with some mercury-containing stuff. But uh, what you end up with it, and, and what you end up with is, is our hydration product. But the reaction is a little bit different with the alkene. Uh, the alkene requires two separate steps. If you remember, in the reaction of the alkene, we get the mercury stuck on there, uh, and we need to use sodium uh, boral hydride, a reducing agent, to get it off. Here's the, here's the alkene example. Uh, we'll talk about the mechanism of the alkyne version in, in a minute and, and then see how it's different a little bit uh, here on the next slide. Uh, so the alkyne version of the mechanism is a little bit different uh, in that, uh, well, number one, we don't need the reducing agent for the demercuriation step. We can get uh, demercuriation happening uh, without to select mercury, copy the mercury, there we go. We can get demercuriation happening without um, the need of a reduce, reducing agent. And that's because this reaction is done in acid. Uh, you can think about this first step of this mechanism being similar to the oxymercuriation step where you have um, the, one of the pi bonds reacting with mercury to form a three-membered ring intermediate. This is a little bit awkward because there's still another pi bond there and it's got a lot of strain. And even in reality, in reality, uh, this is probably a pretty poor description of uh, the mercury alkyne complex, but uh, it's, also, it's not terrible. Uh, it, it works out. And then we have water. Let's see. Uh, I want the oxygen on the other side. There we go. Uh, water is a nucleophile. Just like with alkenes, water can attack, or I'll have it attack this carbon uh, uh, as a nucleophile, break open the three membered ring. And uh, nucleophilic attack. Keep forgetting. I don't want rubidium. I want R. Uh, 
mercury. Oh, uh, and because water is a neutral nucleophile, we don't actually have an OH here yet. We have it's, it's got an extra proton, so we need to remember that we want to have something, another water molecule, come around and, and take away this extra proton. So now, copy this down here. Um, here we have something that looks like the enol intermediate that's formed. Uh, we still have a mercury on here. Uh, I'm kind of being vague about there might be other stuff attached to this mercury. The sulfate anion or some water uh, might still be attached uh, on the other side of this mercury, but, but here's our mercury atom. This is where, this step here is where uh, things get a little bit different than you might be used to seeing in the, the alkene version, where now we need to have a, a second step, a reducing agent come in, reduce the carbon, mercury bond to a carbon hydrogen bond. Because this reaction is in acid, uh, we, instead of needing a reducing agent, we can have um, an acid. Let's get our H3O plus. We're in water, so, so even though sulfuric acid is the active acid, H3O plus is, is what we have a lot of due to the leveling effect. And instead of just and say instead of needing some other reagent, the carbon mercury bond is sub uh, is uh, capable of undergoing a, a process called protonolysis, where it can be protonated, and in doing so, breaking the carbon mercury bond. Uh, carbon is just a little bit more electronegative than mercury. The bond is polarized towards carbon. Carbon uh, is, is a little bit basic here and so you can just you can imagine the reaction going uh, or the that carbon mercury bond reacting as a base with an acid picking up a proton uh, and leaving mercury plus leaving mercury hanging out in the reaction and in fact uh this mercury can go back uh, and start the reaction over. So it's possible that this version uh, of the reaction is catalytic in mercury, though, though often we use stoichiometric amounts. And then we, this gives us our enol intermediate, which is in equilibrium with the ketone. And as far as how the enol uh, is converted into the ketone, uh, stay tuned for a later vi video on keto enol tautomerization. Where we'll talk about the mechanism uh, of the tautomerization reaction itself. In the next video, we're going to talk about uh, hydroboration oxidation, the other primary type of hydration reaction. Stay tuned.